Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can use PowerShell to make nice HTML emails or pages or really any type of text document that we want to customize. I'm going to be using an HTML file today, so this could easily be used in emails if you're using your body as HTML. Uh, parameter or web pages if you wanted to create these as web pages or just documents. Maybe you want to create a document that you need to send out to all of the employees of your company and you want to have unique information. And instead of using mail merge, uh, you can actually use PowerShell to do these features. Um, so let's go ahead and let's actually get started here. So the first thing we're actually going to do is just create our template file. Um, so for that, we're just going to make a very simple HTML file. So I'm going to name it example.html here. And all we're going to do in here is we're just going to do a very simple, I'm not going to be following uh, HTML standards here. I'm just going to be making a very simple HTML tag, body tag, and then, so we have already left out the head. So this wouldn't be something that you would use as a web page. This would definitely be more of an email template. And we're not going to be doing any nice CSS. If you guys would like to see a series on HTML, maybe like how to format some nice emails with some colors, tables, and everything like that, let me know in the comment section down below. And I can definitely do a video on that if that's something you guys would like to see. So here I'm going to start off with a P tag, which is a paragraph tag here. And we're going to do high and we're going to do a curly bracket, zero closing curly bracket, then comma. So that's going to be our just greeting our user in this case, because I'm going to be making a script that's going to go through Active Directory users and basically send them their credentials. Um, we're not going to be generating passwords or anything. I'm just going to be making the clear clear text, just a random string that we're going to put into the email. Uh, but the idea is more of the ideas of how to use this for your environment. I'm also going to be linking the um, link to the video on how I show how to send emails with PowerShell, because this is probably where this is going to be the most handy. Instead of re-showing that, we already have a video on that that kind of separates this out. So it could be a two-step process for you guys could make that very nice. Um, so we're just going to make some more P tags here. This is going to be, this is uh, your credentials with a colon here. And then we're just going to have a couple more P tags here. We're just going to have username, colon, and we're going to have a uh, open curly bracket, one close curly bracket. And I'm sure you've already kind of assumed what the last one's going to be here. We're going to put password colon, open curly bracket, number two, closing curly bracket. You can add more to this like thanks or your instructions on how you would log into your environment of obviously, this is just a very, very simple example um, on how we're gonna do this. Now there are many ways to replace text in PowerShell. We've already seen the dot replace um, in other uh, videos. Um, but we're not going to be using the dot replace this time. We're going to be doing one where we're going to be able to do all these parameters really nicely. And with the dot replace, we would actually have to specify we're replacing this with something else. You're going to see this is going to be really, really simple. You guys are going to be able to get this going in your environment in no time. All right. So the first thing we're going to do here in the actual script itself, of course, is set up our file path variable, which is going to point to our base HTML here. So let's create a variable called base file path here. And all we're going to do is do a set of double quotes. We're going to shift right click on that HTML file, copy path and paste that in there. All right. And now the next thing that we're going to do now in our example, this is what we're going to do. This could be um, getting CSV data from a CSV file. This could be getting data from a JSON. This could be getting data from a database. The options are endless. We're going to go ahead and get our AD users here. And we're going to do a get AD user filter. Now, of course, you would put filter created 
um, with like a get date minus one to get all the new users that were created that day. In our scenario, because I don't have any new users here, we're just going to do all of our test users. So if the name is like test, let's go get that. And we're going to get that on the jacked server. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do a for each user in AD users and open and close curly bracket. Now, this first thing we're going to do is we're going to do new file path. Now, if you're sending this in an email, you could put this as attachment path um, or anything like that. That would work. The variable name doesn't really matter. You're going to want to keep it something that you can actually understand. And we're just going to put a set of double quotes in here. And what I actually like to do is I'm just going to copy this exact same one here. And instead of example.html, we're going to put a variable wrapper and we're going to save it as the user.fam account name because we know that that's going to be unique. We know that there's not going to be multiple. There could only be one SAM account name in the domain. So that works out fantastic. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a data equals get content. Now you can actually do this outside of the for each loop. But the only thing is that you're going to lose is you're going to lose because we're going to be replacing the content. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep refreshing that. There are ways that you can get the content outside of the loop and just assign um, to a new variable. That is going to be really up to you guys on how you guys want to actually perform that. I'm just going to do data, get content path, and we're going to get the content from the base file path. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a data equals data space dash F. And now here we're going to be replacing all of those curly brackets in order. So we start off at zero, one, and then two. So the first thing we're going to put in is we're going to put in the user dot name, then comma, user dot Sam account name, comma. And then here we're going to put the password here. So um, I would just put insert password here. This is where you would actually come up with some really nice fancy algorithm for passwords or connect to a password manager through apis and generate a safe and secure password maybe even use um, a password link per se you you could easily use like password pusher um, or one-time secret apis and you can have the password in there and then maybe you're just going to insert the link on which they can click on to get their passwords. This way, it would be actually secure. I definitely don't recommend sharing passwords just in plain text on an email. Definitely try to make that as secure as you really can. Um, it really depends on your environment as well. In a test environment like we are here, we are good to go like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do our, our data. We're going to pipe that to out-file. And we're going to do the file path. Our file path is going to be new file path. And then if we go actually and go ahead and we double click and we run this here, we're going to see all of our files get generated here. And we would easily be able to send these off and then just go ahead and delete all of them other than the example .html. And let's go ahead and let's actually just take a look at these. So let me just reveal in the file explorer here. And let's just take a look at the example. So this is our example. As we see it, it's exactly what we typed out. We have our nice little paragraphs here and we have our zero, one, and two. Now, if we go ahead, we're just going to minimize this and we look at employee two. And let me just zoom in here. We actually get high test employee two. This is your credentials, username, employee two, password, insert password here. If we just go to a different one here, let's go YT test four. We get high test for YouTube. This is your credential YT test four. insert password here. Now, of course, you can see this where this would be really, really handy. Maybe you have a document to send, like I said, to everyone in your company and everyone has a different little one time code that they need to send 
or you're you're sending an Equifax to all of your employees um, because you're giving them two years of Equifax or something um, like that. They each have their unique code that they could redeem. You would go ahead and send that. You can even use these as um, phishing simulations. You can easily create customized emails that way. Um, these are all very, the endless options with this is, they are all there. If you use Mail Merge, you can easily use this. It's usually Mail Merge uses CSV data and then a template file. You would have your template file. You would put all of your variable holders, which is those curly bracket zero, curly bracket one, curly bracket two in order. And then you go ahead and you replace these. Like I said, you could easily do this as well with a dot replace. It just becomes a lot more cumbersome in the code. This makes it quite easy to do um, and quite versatile in the different uses that you can use it in. Let me know how you guys are gonna use this in your environment. And as well, if you guys want to see some more HTML, CSS, maybe a little bit of JavaScript as well, let me know in the comment section down below. We can actually dive a little bit deeper into that, make some nice looking emails, really test those out on these videos. Um, if you haven't already, also please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.